In this video, I'm going to create 100 Halloween designs within just 10 minutes. I'm going to be using Adobe Illustrator for this, as well as Excel to create the listings afterwards. If you want to follow along with this video so you can replicate this process for yourself, then you will also need to download the files that are linked at the top of the description, which are necessary for this method to work properly. So before you open Adobe Illustrator, you need to take the two script files that you just downloaded and paste them into a certain folder within your Adobe Illustrator directory. So this is the path that you need to go to. Your path might vary slightly depending on the version of Adobe Illustrator you have installed. Once you've got the folder, paste the files in there, you go to go and you can open the program to start designing. The design I'm actually going to use as an example in this video is I am with the blank. This is a common Halloween design style which goes along really well with uh, the typical Halloween costumes where people just wear a, an illustration of a fruit or of an animal. Then there might be another person wearing this design style with an arrow and the phrase. I think it's pretty cool and an easy way to create scalable designs. So essentially I'm going to use this example with different items of food. So when creating a new document, I'd recommend using the Merch by Amazon dimensions over here. To get started, because I want it to be optimized for black t-shirts, I'm going to head over to File, click Document Setup, then tick Simulate Colored Paper, and change this color from white to black, then hit OK and OK again. So to go ahead and create the design, I'm going to use the Type tool, just click anywhere on the artboard, then change the color right here to white, and the font size to the maximum possible, which is 1296. Draw this over a bit, and then I'm going to write, I am with the, and change the font to Pocus Pocus. This is a font that I found on Creative Market. I'll leave a link to it down below in the description, uh, but obviously you can also use any other font of your choice. So the next bit of our phrase is going to be the variable word. And for that, we're going to need to use area type. So when you have the type tool selected, draw a box by clicking on the artboard and holding it down and then just dragging your mouse across. You don't want this to go over the artboard itself. Change the text color to white again and line this paragraph up here to center. And I'm just going to write something in here like banana maybe. Next up, head over to the layers panel. If you don't see this, head over to window and tick layers. Open this up and then rename the banana layer to variable one. Now I want to add the arrow right here at the bottom and for that I'm going to use the rectangle tool. Just draw out a box. While holding down shift, I'm going to draw out a square. I'll rotate this by 90 degrees by holding down shift and just turning it on its side. Then I'll use the pen tool to delete one of the outer anchor points. And now we can drag this over our rectangle to create the arrow. The next step would be selecting both of these shape, heading over to the Pathfinder window, which once again, if you don't see it, it will be up here in window and Pathfinder. So use the Pathfinder window to unite these two shapes. And now I want to make our arrow suit the font a bit better because the font itself is not very geometric. It's got sort of rounded edges and is a bit wobbly. So to replicate that same effect on our arrow, just select the arrow, head over to Effect, Distort and Transform, Zigzag. And now you need to play around with the options right here. Make sure to change the points to smooth. And then you need to play around with the size and the ridges per segment a little bit. Um, you don't want to go like too far. You quickly make the arrow turn into like a, a weird object. But if you have these at around 10 pixels, maybe seven ridges, that looks all right. And now I'm going to head over to Object, Envelope Distort, make with warp and also give this arrow a bit of an arc which is the first style that comes up by default and i'll make the bend go negatively which i think looks quite nice as well then i'll head back to object hit expand okay and give this arrow a nice little orange color to suit the halloween theme just make sure all of these objects are aligned to center by selecting them all and then heading to the align options up here align to artboard and then hit horizontally aligned to center. And now that the design is ready, we need to just do a quick few steps to make this ready to be exported in bulk. Head over to window and enable the actions panel. Click the little plus symbol to create a new action and name it something like save as PNG. Hit record, then head over to file, export, 
and save for web. Make sure that you have PNG24 selected so that you have a transparent background and then just save this file anywhere on your PC. And now you can click this stop symbol right here to stop recording our action. And you need to click on this toggle dialog button as well over here. Make sure not to forget that. And now we're going to insert one of the scripts into this action to help us deal with the text if it bleeds off the edge of the artboard. So to do so, click the hamburger menu up here in the top right, click insert menu item, and then write deal with and hit enter. And as you can see, that's already added it right here to our action. You just need to make sure to move it up in front of this save for web action. Now that that's done, we can start importing our variables for this word banana right here. And to do that, head over to file, scripts, variable importer, and then click on choose data file. Now we'll go ahead and select the Excel sheet called food, which are also included in the download link. Hit OK, then head over to options, click assign where it says dataset names, then change field one to the bottom option of dataset one, field two to nothing and field three to nothing as well. And now you can hit OK and click import variables, then click OK and it's imported that Excel sheet, which by the way, you can also change. All it is is just two columns. One says variable one, the other says data set one. Data set is the actual file name in the end and variable one is what gets replaced right here in the design. And uh, yeah, just change the words in there around or add some more to the list if you want to. As long as the headers stay the same, that should work for you. And now we're ready to actually bulk export these designs. So head over to the actions panel again, click the hamburger menu, go down to the bottom where it says batch, make sure you've selected the correct action, which you just created, save as PNG. The source is meant to be data sets and where it says destination, you need to choose the folder that you want to save these designs to and just make sure that all of these other settings are the same as mine as well. And then you're ready to hit OK and you can literally watch Illustrator do the work for you. It's going to replace that variable word with all of the different food items in our Excel list and save the designs to your desired folder. So now that Illustrator has saved all of our files, we can go ahead and create the listings for them very quickly as well. To help you with this, I've also attached this spreadsheet right here in the download link. It's called Flying Upload Food. If you're using Flying Upload, then I'd recommend moving this into the same folder as your designs. That's going to help us in a few minutes here, but you don't have to use Flying Upload to create these listings very quickly. So basically open up your Excel file and this is what you should see. And I've basically prepared this template, it's a flying upload template, but essentially you want to write a title up here as well as a description and tags. I've given you a bit of a preset right here, obviously change the, the keywords or the, the phrases around if you're creating different designs, but what you want to keep the same is this formula up here. And if we look at this piece of text, for example, that is actually linked to one of our columns over here, which is essentially just a list of food, the same list of food that we just used to create our designs and it automatically inputs this column of words into our title, description and tags. So in the description, for example, it says, I am with the J2, which is pulling from here, his and hers couple matching lazy Halloween costume. And the beautiful thing about that is if we select all of these columns and drag them down by this little square in the, the bottom right corner, and drag it down all the way to the last row, Excel will create the titles, description and tags for us with those keywords inserted. So if we actually read it from here, I'm with the pickle and the description has it imported as well, as well as the tags. So really, really nice and quick way to create your listings right there. Once again, if you have flying upload, you can also do this final step if you save the file right now and exit out of it. If you go into the flying upload tool and go to the edit window, you can now drag the Excel file that you just saved into flying upload and drop it onto this left side. And now it's automatically imported all of these designs with the correct title and description attached. And if you head back and click on upload here, we've got them all ready to be uploaded to all of these different marketplaces. If you want to learn how to upload these designs very quickly and efficiently to multiple different marketplaces, then I'd highly recommend you check out this video next, where I show you how to use flying upload to automate your print on demand business.